I would like to remind people of my tweet 22nd of February, not not to brag again, but I will I'll, I'll attach it here. Hi and welcome to the German Fußball podcast for this breaking news a special episode as Sab Alonso has declared that he will stay at Bayer Leverkusen. That it's so breaking, in fact, although we could see it coming t- throughout the day, but it's so breaking that we get to see you in your cross-country outfit, sporting the red, white, and blue of the Norwegian flag. You're looking good, but I'm assuming you've had your cross-country and now we find yourself in a car. I find myself in a car. I not always uh, do. I love to do podcast wherever I am but normally we plan it better but what we did know Marcus and I say this straight away it's, it's a good day for our podcast it's a good day for for my job as a pundit because the 22nd of February I, I made a tweet and said that Alonso would stay at Leverkusen I made up the alternative saying the alternative number one was he would stay alternative two he would stay another year then go to uh, Real Madrid we'll know about more about that later so uh, it's a good day because I, I knew we, we did a good uh, good work on that thing. But let's make it through the day, Marcus. Uh, it was quite surprisingly uh, when you, that that he will do it today. I, I've just been off the press conference. I've seen the press conference, and Alonso said in his own word that he want to stay uh, in Leverkusen for at least one more year. He told us that that he told his players this morning so it's very very fresh for them as well because the last weeks the speculation is going high especially in Germany as Bayern more or less done no secret of of Alonso being the candidate number one but of course in Liverpool as well with Jurgen Klopp going out me maybe being the dream ticket for the Liverpool fans because of his uh, uh, past uh, at the club so a big day, uh, one of the first decisions uh, in a very busy kind of find me a coach uh, environment that will happen this summer. And it is going to make it even more complicated because Alonso is staying at Bayer Leverkusen. Yeah, we hate to say we told you so, but nonetheless. Yeah, I, so, I so hate it and you can see my smile all the way from, from Lillehammer. Yeah, you're good at retrieving those tweets too, but you did say, because we did discuss it on the on the um, following Klopp's departure and what have you, and it seemed to sort of the, the pieces were put perfectly into place. But a couple of things that I want to kind of touch base uh, with you on. First of all, from a timeline perspective, you mentioned there that the players would were, were told this morning and then we saw it sort of in the last few days with Hernes coming out and saying, yeah, well, it'll be practically like it'll be very hard to get Sabi Alonso, etc. Liverpool had been off the table for a while, according to the sources, in terms of Sabi Alonso's considerations. First of all, from a timeline perspective, when would a club like Bayern Munich or a Liverpool, for that matter, when would they know? Or is it as kind of shocking for them uh, that it was announced today? Now they've been they've been told they've been told either through direct phone calls or through uh, uh, indirect people that will, will be told that tomorrow he will be uh, be say this publicly. But it's a form of discretion, that, right? It's like for like rather yes, than it's making for, it... it's a form of discretion because because Bayern wouldn't never in, in these days in 2024 when you know all more or less know everything anyway there are so many leaks around Bayern will never do that directly because that would have seen as unfair that they, they wouldn't have done that Bayern Munich have done that as many others club they have tapped up coaches or players in the in in the past I'm not saying that there's not happening at the moment but to be fair to Liverpool Football Club and to Bayern Munich they've been very discreet they have very been very respectful on everything with the issue Alonso. And I think, Marcus, this is why it's Alonso. Because uh, remember back in, in February when, when everybody started with all these discussions, I said to you that, that I, I've interviewed him uh, as, as a player. I interviewed him as a coach because he was playing Bayer Leverkusen against Molde. Uh, and I, you, you got yourself the impression how he's like as a person. Uh, and as you know, at the time as well, my sources were, they were brilliant. Uh, and 
today they confirm they've been brilliant all along. But what they all told me, Marcus, that was one thing in common. That was as Alonso is different. Alonso is another type of of person, another type of leader. He's not your tap up coach. I think that both Bayern Munich and Liverpool thought knew if there was a slight little chance that they will get him they had to do this in a respectful way and one of the things that I annoyed me a lot about some of our colleagues saying that they prefer this, he preferred that he would do this and do that we knew that that wasn't right because Alonso is not that kind of guy Alonso will never as a Leverkusen coach some, some, some way indirectly or some through agent or other people kind of mention that he will want to do something else. Me, maybe inside, maybe to his closest family, but he will never take part in those kind of speculations. That's why I knew that all this, he preferred this, he preferred that. That was wrong. And I knew that 100%. And I got that confirmed for people play, uh, working with him that that is not the way he's doing things. So I think, Marcus, that Alonso, also when you see the timing of today, it's Friday now, when we when we record this, they're playing Hoffenheim this weekend, a decisive game for them because they're getting closer to closer, that Bayern Munich can't catch them up, and you would think this is a, this is a, a little trap for them. Maybe they will throw points away, they can't do that. And this is a relief for the whole club. And I guess this is also, I'm not in, in Alonso's mind, but I, I will also think that this is also a relief for him because at the press conference, he was very clear on that, that he used international break now, not only to make his decision, I think the decision was made in his mind, but also the decision of when to go out publicly in terms of the communication strategy that Leverkusen, Simon Rolfes and his team, as Alonso, have done together. Yeah, and I find it rather impressive as such. We've, we, we haven't been seized to stop being impressed by Sabi Alonso this season. But the, the manner and the, 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 the discretion, the way, the class in which he exudes suggests that this is obviously a man with, with, a, with, a, with a proper head on his shoulders as such. But let's not underestimate that despite that, when you have these big clubs coming for you, more lucrative options, more the, the shining lights of, of world football really centering around you to despite that say, no, you know what, I want to take another year, still deserves that acknowledgement, that respect. Because now we are talking from a point of hindsight. We say, yeah, but then he develops and the Real Madrid comes, a job comes open in, in 2025. But even still to have that maturity i guess or that reflection to say you know what i am far from developed as a coach i need this another year to develop obviously now we can talk about how sensible that seems but for him to have that make that decision being at the center of it i don't think can be can be underestimated because we have to know that leverkusen although they they are on a path for now to win the bundesliga this is a club that haven't have won a lot of things this is a it's a fantastic football club. It's a fantastic company com coming out from Bayer, but it's still a back self. It's a factory kind of eleven, and um, and this is not the most and and it's no disrespect to Leverkusen, but but they will know this is not most of the glamorous addresses in the world, as you were saying. When you played for Real Madrid, you played for Liverpool, you played for Bayern. The alternatives are there. I mean, that is tempting. That is tempting for any any coach or any player or whatever job you have in football. The thing is that I was thinking Pep Guardiola, he went in and took the, the second team of Barcelona, then go into winning the treble, winning the Champions League with Barcelona. Klopp more or less went as a player going in to take over the Mainz job. So it's not like Alonso could have done differently and it will be a, a miss or not successful. He could have he could have done, he could have taken over Liverpool tomorrow and maybe that, or, or there would be a great success. But Alonso is going for the Alonso way, which he, he did. I, I, what you, I love my communication strategy. And what you see from Alonso as a football player, how he was on a football pitch, how, how he is as a leader, how he's taking the decisions for a future and the step-by-step step he has made in his career. This is just a, 
a normal consequence of that. And I know it's easy to say now because we know we know that. But that was was I was told, Marcus. All the speculations around him that that was rubbish. Of course, he was tempting to when when Bayern suddenly uh, said that uh, Tuchel was leaving in the summer. Of course, when Jurgen Klopp was was told that he was leaving. Uh, uh, in the summer because he was exhausted and needed a rest. Of course, Alonso will come up there. But it's not like Alonso would change all his plans just because of that. I mean, Alonso will now have a Leverkusen team that will probably, probably win the, the German Bundesliga. He is into planning of a new season in the Champions League. He is still a young coach. He's some great young players there in Florian Wirtz. He got Boniface for a whole season. He got Tader. He got our new favorite player, Andrich, in there. And Frimpong and so on and so on. And he's, he's probably got some great players now uh, in his side for next season as well. So the future for Alonso, although he's at this time saying, I will stay at Leverkusen, is unbelievable bright. For those who listen, and there will be Liverpool fans and there will be Bayern Munich fans and the whole lot who say, yeah, but I don't get it. Why is Sabi Alonso staying? He's going to win the, he's going to most likely win the Bundesliga. He's maximized what he can do for Bayern Leverkusen. Why, why stay? What do we, what would you say to, to those who, who ask that question? Well, and, and that's just a fair, uh, that's a fair question, and it's a fair uh, analysis of the situation because a Bayern Munich fan, uh, a Liverpool fan, will think that the, the greatest thing in life is to coach these two clubs, and it is. It's two of the biggest clubs in the world. Are we hundred percent certain that the timing will be right for Alonso and those clubs? No, we don't know, and Alonso doesn't know either. But the thing is, Marcus, if you do an analysis of Liverpool. Is it the most tempting thing to come after Klopp? Isn't it the better job to come after the guy who came after Klopp? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I'm Alonso. I try to put on the bright, intellectual, intelligent hat of Alonso. I try to put it on me because I would have probably run to Liverpool or run to, to Bayern Munich. Then you, that's Liverpool. Coming after Klopp is t- tough. You have Van Dijk, you have Salah, you have... A lot of players come, uh, let's say they are closer to the end of their, their career than they are at the start their of their Or their contracts career. at the very least. And the contracts are up, uh, that's true. And then you have a Bayern, he is in Leverkusen, he'll win the Bundesliga, he will go into the Champions League to kind of go that path that every other German coach, and he's not German, but he's been a German club, and go to Bayern straight away, as Nagelsmann did when he was doing well for Leipzig. At Tuchel is doing now when he's coming back there, and so on. Kovac leaving uh, Eintracht Frankfurt back in the days, going to Frank, uh, uh, Bayern. I'm not sure that he wanted to do that. I think that Alonso, and I by no means try to understand his mind, I can only see him from outside. I can only see him from the interaction I've had with him and people around him talking about him. But I can see that he is the guy that he will think, will will either do it when when I want to do it or we won't do it at all. Okay, if if not, then I go back to Real Sociedad and take their, their team and I, I do my stuff. That's how he comes forward. And I think he's 42, Marcus. He's 42. That is, that is no age for... For any coach, so I think that the timing wasn't right, and I, and I'm and I'm hundred percent sure that the the big majority of Liverpool fans and Bayern Munich fans they would have loved to see Alonso, but I think also they will respect his decision and respect his argument because if you saw the press conference today, it was all about missions not accomplished here. I want to develop. I'm still young. I've talked to my team. I talked to my players and so on. So he, he says the right things. I'm reading a book now called the, the, the Book of Mastery or the Concise Mastery. And it's talking about the, the phase of apprenticeship. It being that uh, during that period, you have to hone your skills. You have to observe, but you also have to engage in the practical. And then you can become the master through that. It's important to remind ourselves and the listener that this is Sab Alonso's first and full season with a first team right he came in um beginning ish of of last season was with the second team of Real Sociedad I'm sure there is an acknowledgement in 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 his brain there that 
listen, these are big jobs that I would take on in a Liverpool, a Bayern Munich, potentially Real Madrid. Leverkusen provides the perfect opportunity for him where there is less scrutiny. There is more time to, to develop. There is more time to hone his skills with less pressure and with the status that he has and will have with Bayer Leverkusen and within German football, it provides the perfect development, uh, place of development for him. And that's, that's I think, what is admirable. I think there's certainly an acknowledgement there. The same, like you say, the same way he was a player, he's now a coach and the way he exudes a certain calm and class to him. And then he will have the assurance um, and confidence in himself to know that these opportunities will probably, most likely, come along if I continue doing the same things. And then Saba Alonso will go from, I can't believe I say it, but apprentice to master. So that's that's the way I would see it from a sort of a, a philosophical um, term. But that I, towards the end, any ending remarks as we as we kind of conclude this this special on, on, on Saba Alonso? We obviously have the games coming up tomorrow and he is at the edge of greatness, of, of history for Bayer Leverkusen. And obviously that will be his his focus now. I think we should have ended uh, on your words there because I think that that, that is very good words uh, words and I, I also think that is it's it's a story that the apprentice will do uh, most probably win win the German Bundesliga that is a great story in itself. I would like to remind people of my tweet twenty second of February not not to brag again, but I will I'll, I'll attach to, it here. <laughs> yeah, you'll attach it, but I will go back, Marcus, for my alternative too. Because my alternative two is sometimes two plus two is four. Uh, Angelotti extended his contract at Real Madrid till 2025. Alonso, take another year at Leverkusen. He has the contract till 2026, but there are an, a clause in his contract that he, he could leave. And as for the recent development with Leverkusen and Alonso, I think that that a handshake would have been enough anyway. So we can imagine that down the road, I'm not saying that decided. I'm just saying that Perez doesn't come forward to me as a guy that just takes things as it comes. He will think forward. He will think strategically. He will think that after Angelotti, no, Kroos will be there another season. I don't, I'm not sure what's happening to Modric. I just see that Real Madrid is developing one of the most exciting young teams of a decade. If you have a look at the players they do have, great players, young players. Somehow, I feel that Alonso will be the right one taking them to the next level. But what do I know? I only knew five weeks ago that Alonso <laughs> would stay in Leverkus. Marcus. So I think we have to stop now before we, we brag too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just worth <laughs> mentioning. But uh, no, I appreciate that. That It's, um, yeah, I'll attach it here in the video. For the people that are listening on audio, you can come to our YouTube where you'll be able to see the more visual aspect of it. But that for now, thanks a lot. I'll leave you to it. Uh, recover, rest this, this Easter, and then we will catch up on, on Monday. Uh, following uh, the Bundesliga round. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen and a happy Easter to everybody. And we speak then, as Marcus is saying, over the weekend. Bye-bye. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>